Everybody hear me? If you're in your cars, can you hear good? Yeah? I, I don't see any heads shaking no, so we're going to assume that you can hear okay. Do right. you want to play the call of worship song for us real quick, Richard? Yesterday I was a little bit nervous, but surely wasn't anticipating this cool breeze this morning. And so it's a little chillier than we were, were thinking it was going to be. But um, those of you who are here, we're so glad, glad that you came today for our outdoor service. Uh, it, just, it just feels like it's been a long time since we've gathered all together. And so we're just trying to think outside the box of what will it take for people to be comfortable uh, to do that. And so and we, we, this was a... a just a, a wish, I guess, and uh, gave us some answers as well for that. So we'll probably be back indoors next week. Uh, but anyway, uh, let me go through some of the announcements that we have coming up. We're still uh, supporting our Fuel Up program. We're supporting several uh, teenagers at the high school. So if you'd like to contribute to that, uh, please do. Uh, we have a quarterly business meeting right after the, the worship service this morning. So uh, if you're a member, please stay in your spot as soon as the service is over. And um, the Aura Byerly uh, group has been sponsoring a project all month long to help foster children. So there's a, an insert in there for that that you can look at and see what you can help with. Uh, our Sandy Creek Baptist Association annual meeting is coming up Monday, October 25th at 7 o'clock at Cool Springs Baptist. If you're a messenger, uh, we would like to ride together for that, so uh, give me a holler, an email, a text, a phone call, a visit, whatever, to uh, let me know if you are, are going to be able to go with us to that. Um, we're hoping to, we're wanting to schedule a trip to Tribulation Trail at Beulah Baptist on Friday, October 29th. Uh, we're gearing it for teenagers, but we want anybody and everybody that's interested to go with us. And so uh, if you're not familiar with that, it's a mile-long um, trail where they kind of do scenes from the book of Revelation. And so it, it sounds pretty interesting and clever to me. And so uh, we'd like to go get supper or something ahead of time and then go to, to that together. And so if you're interested in that, we need to know as soon as possible, even today, if you can let us know today uh, if you're interested. Uh, our choir rehearsals have started back up on Wednesday nights at 745. Uh, roughly 745 so if you're interested in singing with the choir please come out and join us uh, we're hoping to put something together for christmas and so even if you don't normally sing in the choir but you're interested in christmas music we'd love for you to to join us and sing with us for that and then our big outreach is coming up on um, saturday october 30th our trunk or treat uh, where uh, we're going to hopefully line up a bunch of cars around the parking lot of the cemetery and send them through this way and you pass out candy to them or goodies uh, we are uh, hoping to have a, a good line of cars lined up here for for that and so if you're interested please let me know there's a sign up sheet inside outside the sunday school office uh, the more the better so please think about uh, participating with that 
Uh, if you know you can't do that, we're also accepting donations of candy and uh, hay bales and pumpkins or decorations. So uh, if you can help out with that, uh, let me know with that as well. So with that said, let's continue on in our time of worship and um, let's pray together. I do want to particularly lift up uh, the Mike Palmer family, that, that whole family, and also uh, Luann Moore, who just got home from rehab with her knees this week. Uh, the, the guys did a wonderful job in building a ramp for her, so if you helped out with that, thank you very much. It looks really good and it's very, very, very helpful. And so um, as we pray together, let's also keep those two uh, families in our hearts and in our minds. So uh, let's pray together now. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful day. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to worship you, to gather together, to study your word together, and to just be together as the people of God, as your family here at Sandy Branch. And so uh, lift our hearts, lift our spirits, lift our minds as we as we join together to focus on you and to express our love to you and to honor you with our worship. And may every part of the service today be pleasing and glorifying to you. And we do ask that you would help us to just have a, an overwhelming sense of your presence with us. And that, that we know that you are here as we worship you. And speak to our hearts, speak to our minds. And uh, we just thank you, Lord, and we love you, Lord. Palmer and his family, and we lift up Luann. We just pray for, for healing, and, and we pray for hope and encouragement. We pray for peace in their lives. We pray for provision in their lives. We just pray that you would wrap your loving arms around them and take care of them and provide for all that they need. And so we just thank you, Lord, and praise your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Ms. So, Debbie. chosen as Pastor Appreciation Sunday, and I hope that you'll take time to read the two poems that are in the bulletin. Uh, one is uh, in honor of Pastor Jimmy, and one is in uh, honor of Jennifer, uh, and they're put there by uh, the church in love and appreciation of them and their whole family. So I would like to read the, the one entitled, Our Pastor by Judy Crow. Have you ever walked in your pastor's shoes and gone where his feet have trod? Have you ever thought of what he means to us and on your, thank, on your knees given thanks to God? Have you ever told him thank you for being there when times are tough, for comforting words and fervent prayers when the trials and storms of life get rough? He answers our calls in the middle of the night and tells us not to worry for he will be there. He gives up his own needed rest and comes with prayers of comfort to share. Have you ever thought to say thank you, Pastor? for preaching God's word so we can understand for all the times he encourages us to be God's feet and hands. When you pray, put him toward the top of your list and ask the Lord to surround him with loving care, to give him strength and walk with him, to help him with the burdens that he must bear. Have you ever walked in your pastor's shoes and gone where his feet have trod? Have you ever thought of what he means to us? Get on your knees for thanks to God. And Pastor Jimmy, we love you and we thank you. Uh, appreciate you and your whole family. And we are blessed that you're here. Pastor Jimmy, we at Sandy Branch would like to thank you and express to you how much that we appreciate the time that you have been with us. You came to us during a difficult time for all churches, dealing with the effects of COVID, but you have shown us your professionalism and your compassion, and we have grown to love you and your family. Our vision is to have a Tim 
Tom Calicoats come to lead us in some worship music. Good morning. Good morning. It's a joy to be here. I would like to thank uh, thank Sandy Branch Church for asking me to come and sing. And uh, I'd like to give the uh, glory to God for allowing me to be here. Uh, so, I'll give uh, just a little brief uh, history class this morning, if the preacher don't mind, about, uh, about this song as a I believe the gentleman's name was C. Isaac Miles that uh, penned this in 1912. He was a pharmacist by trade. Uh, he wrote Christian songs and he did photography for uh, as a hobby. And he found out that he could read his Bible under the red light while he was doing the uh, uh, doing the film, getting it ready. And one day he was in the studio and he uh, opened up the Bible and it fell open to. Uh, chapter 20 of John, John chapter 20, you go home and read it this afternoon, and it's about Mary and our resurrected Savior in the garden, and so he went home and he penned these words. Uh, 
if you didn't have a chance to pick up a uh, Lord's Supper packet as you were coming out and getting in place, let's let's make that happen now before I get started with my message. So does, does anybody in your cars need somebody to bring a tray to you? Or if you didn't get yours uh, before you sat down, there's a tray back there. And there's two trays, one on each side over here. So um, if you need a deacon to bring it to you and honk your horn or something so that we can... reading this morning comes from 1 Corinthians 11, verse 26, it's printed in your bulletin, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes, 1 Corinthians 11, 26, let me read it again, for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. <coughs> I was going to try to be clever. My whole sermon and topic this morning is about remembering and things that we can use to help us remember. And I had the perfect plan that just as I was beginning to speak, I had my, my phone alarm set uh, to ring like an alarm, like a reminder. And I was going to say, oh, excuse me. Uh, I, let me put that away. It's what I use to help me remember to preach. But I forgot that I don't start preaching at 11 a.m. There was no real way of knowing what specific time. So just imagine right now that my alarm's going off. And it's really annoying, and you're wondering, why is his phone alarm going off? And now I'm going to say, oh, excuse me, that's the alarm I set to remind me that I'm supposed to preach today. Well, I know that was cheesy, but I couldn't, well, I actually gave it a second attempt as Tim was singing, and as y'all were trying to get your elements to, to set it again real quickly, but I'm not smart enough to do it that quick, so... Anybody else ever need reminders in life? Uh, we all do. I find that the older I get, man, if I don't write it down, it just does not stick at all. And uh, maybe you find yourself like that too. So, um, you know, because things are worth remembering, because it is important for us to remember, we have created all kinds of tools. There's just papers floating around all around me. <laughs> lesson learned. Okay. But we, we come up with all sorts of tools to help us to remember. Uh, even if it's something as simple as a calendar. Anybody have a calendar on your fridge or a calendar somewhere in your house where you write down your notes of your different appointments and stuff? I love the calendar app on my phone and on my computer that it'll give me a reminder like 24 hours ahead of time, and then another reminder, like 30 minutes ahead of time, and then another reminder just right before, and then for an appointment. And 
Uh, that just helps me so much uh, with those notifications. Now, I'd always heard the old school way of helping you remember something was tying a string around your finger. And anybody remember hearing that? Now, that makes no sense to me of whatsoever why that can help me remember, but uh, that was one tool that people have used in the past. Uh, have any of you ever used a mnemonic device uh, to help you to remember, where like you uh, take the first letter of a series of words that you're trying to remember, and you come up with a new word or something? Uh, I bet you have. I bet most of you learned one in school. How many are familiar with Roy G. Biff? Anybody? What's Roy G. Biff stand for? It's the colors of the rainbow, right? Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. It helped you to ace that test back when you were in whatever grade you were about Roy G. Biff. Uh, have you ever written important thoughts or things that you wanted to remember or, or highlights in your life in a journal or in a diary? Dear diary, today I gave my heart to Jesus. I hope that's one that you have put in your diary at some point. Some companies do a masterful job of, of helping us to remember their products and um, just little jingles that they come up with. Now I'm going to sing you a jingle from 1973. Now I was only two years old at the time, but it must have played for a while because I remember it. If you remember it, or if you remember the product, you can join with me in singing it, or you can just tell me what you think it is in the end. 1973. Now I apologize for singing. <laughs> My baloney has a first name. It's O-S-C-A-R. My baloney has a second name. It's M-A-Y-E-R. I love to eat it every day. If you ask me why, I'll say, cause Oscar Mayer has a way with B-O-L-O-G-N-A. Oscar Mayer, the first name in baloney. How, 70, 1973, and that's still in our heads that we can remember that Oscar Mayer is the main brand for baloney. Now, those of you who are married, hold up your ring and see if, if you can remember what that stands for. And those of us who are married, put that ring on and it helps us to remember our vows to our loved ones, our commitments to our loved ones. Now, we erect uh, beautiful monuments to help us remember important places and people and experiences. I love that monument uh, over there, the memorial uh, for the veterans and those uh, who were killed in, in war. And now, y'all really meant for that thing to be seen the lights around that at night can, I'm scared that a, a 747 is going to come landing down here one of these days. But I love that monument. It reminds us of something important in our lives. Uh, we take pictures and arrange photo albums or, or have them in our phone and like to scroll through <coughs> our pictures uh, to remind us of, of important people, important places, important experiences in our lives. Uh, we collect um, souvenirs from the vacations we go on or for the important trips that we go on, all to help us to remember. Uh, even as a nation, we set up special holidays that are meant to help us to remember special people and special things that have happened in the life of our country. So we have all sorts of tools to help us to remember. But you know, that didn't begin with us. That's been going on for a long time. Uh, let's look at two biblical examples of, of reminders of the things that can help people remember. So just before the Israelites entered into the promised land, Moses called all the people of Israel together and he read to them all of the commandments and the laws that God had given them. And he said in Deuteronomy 6, 4-9, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when Your gates. 
of Moses charged the people of Israel to remember God's laws that they were given to live by. And then he gave them a couple tools to help them to remember those laws. One of the tools was simple. Just talk about it a lot. Talk about God's word a lot, and that will help you to remember. Another tool that he gave them was to literally uh, put tiny copies of, of the commandments uh, in little boxes to wear on their wrists like bracelets or across their foreheads. And, and Jewish people today, a lot of Jewish people still use those tools to help them to remember God's word. Uh, and then another was to literally write God's commandments on the door frames of their homes. And so tools that help them to remember God's word. Now, another Old Testament story that does something similar was Joshua. Many years after the Israelites had already been in the promised land, Joshua was getting ready to die. It was near the time of his death. So he wanted to give the people of Israel a new charge. He wanted to renew God's covenant with them. So he called all the tribes of Israel together at Shechem. And he went through and reminded them of all that God had done for them and reminded them of God's commands and laws again. And then we're told in Joshua 24, 27, see, this stone will be a witness against us. It has heard all the words the Lord has said to us. It will be a witness against you if you are untrue to your God. So what was Joshua doing? He put that gigantic big stone in their normal place of worship as a reminder. Every time they came together there at Shechem, every time they saw that big stone, they were reminded of their commitment to the Lord to live by his covenant, to live by his commands. And so uh, a good reminder. Uh, all of those kind of things would be good for us as well. How do you remind yourself to pray daily or to read your Bible daily or to do something uh, daily? To, to, to have some kind of tools or reminders can be helpful. Well, then we shift to the New Testament. On the evening before his crucifixion and death, Jesus took a routine annual ritual uh, that all of the Jewish people would do every year, and that was eating the Passover meal together uh, as a way of remembering what God had done and freeing the Israelites from bondage in Egypt. So every year they were together and, and eat the Passover meal together to remember what God had done. But Jesus, on the evening before his, his, his death and crucifixion, uh, took that ritual and he gave it new meaning. He gave it a, a new focus. We call it the Last Supper. We see Jesus and his disciples gathering together taking the Passover meal together. And so as they're meeting together for this Passover meal, Jesus says to them in Matthew 26, 26 to 28, he said, passage tells us. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. So Jesus took elements from the Passover meal, from, from any meal for that matter, and gave them uh, the power of helping them to remember what Jesus was going to do for them. The bread would represent his body, which would be broken and killed for the payment of sins. The wine would be a reminder of what Jesus would do in shedding his blood for the forgiveness of sin. So this morning, as we gather to do the Lord's Supper together, uh, the same chart is before us. The whole point of doing the Lord's Supper together is to remember. 
to remember Jesus, to remember what Jesus has done for us. As we eat of the bread, which represents Jesus' slain body, and as we drink of the cup, which represents Jesus' shed blood, let's remember what Christ has done for us. So before we partake, let's take a moment to remember. Remember how God created all that is and said that it's very good. Remember how uh, from the very beginning in the Garden of Eden and then throughout history with every single one of us, we chose our own way and rejected our maker. Remember how we were lost in our sin, separated from our creator and doomed to be condemned to be separated from him forever. Uh, in, a, in a place called hell. Remember how God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to come into this world as a person just like us. Uh, remember how he lived a perfect, sinless life and that in the fullness of time that he sacrificed his life for us. He died on a cross for our sin, taking our sin on himself. Remember how he hung on that Roman cross until his breath slipped away. Remember how he was buried in a borrowed tomb. Remember how he rose victoriously from the grave on the third day, ultimately defeating the power of sin and death. Remember how you trusted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, uh, accepting his wonderful gifts of grace and mercy and salvation. Remember how Jesus called us to be his witnesses, serving others and proclaiming the gospel. And do this in remembrance of him. So every time we partake of the Lord's Supper, we remember Jesus. We remember who he is. We remember what he did for us. We remember what he has called us to do. And the scripture tells us that every time we do this together, we're proclaiming the Lord's death. We're proclaiming uh, what Jesus has done. So this is a way of remembering uh, through reenacting what Jesus has done with the bread and with the juice. And so uh, at this time, we're going to partake of the Lord's Supper together. Hopefully you got all of your communion cups or communion packets. One last chance before we get started. Anybody else uh, need a communion packet, a communion cup? Okay. The Apostle Paul, and, and by the way, this is my first time leaving the Lord's Supper with you. So th this is an honor for me. This is one that's going to go in my journal that on today's date was my first time leaving the Lord's Supper with you. So um, I'm excited about that. And I bet it's been a long time since you've done it together. This COVID situation has just got everything in a mess with that, right? And so um, uh, it's important for us as the body of Christ to do this together. Uh, it helps us to uh, to feel connected together as the family of God. It helps us to, um, to be united uh, in our calling as Christians. And so the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11, 27 to 29, he said, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. A man ought to examine himself before he eats of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats and drinks judgment on himself. Uh, in other words, uh, before we partake of the Lord's Supper together, we need to make sure that our hearts are right with him. Uh, we need to make sure that our connection with him is, is unhindered by our sin. And so the Apostle John gave us a, a wonderful promise of how we can make sure that we are right with God, even after we're believers. He says in 1 John 1, 9, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just 
and will forgive us our sins and purify us from unrighteousness. And so, uh, although when Jesus died for our sin, he died for all of our sin, past, present, and future. And so, uh, even though we may have sin in our lives, as Christians, it's not going to doom us again. There's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. But you know as well as I do that when we have sin in our lives as Christians, that our intimacy with God is not the same. Uh, that it does uh, create some, 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 not friction necessarily, but we're not as close as we could be. And so uh, let's take advantage of this promise that John has shared with us about confessing our sin together. And so we're going to pray silently for a moment or so. And please uh, take that as a time of confession for you. Uh, and then I'm going to lead us in a corporate prayer of confession. I'm going to do that by praying through King David's Psalms uh, 139, verse 23 and 24, and Psalm 51, 1 to 17. And so let's bow together and, and take a moment or so of silent meditation, and then I'll lead us in this corporate prayer using these scripture passages. Please bow with me and let's pray together. Search us, O God, and know our hearts. Test us and know our anxious thoughts. See if there are any offensive ways in us, and lead us in the way everlasting. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion, blot out our transgressions. Wash away all our iniquities and cleanse us from our sin. For we know our transgressions, and our sin is always before us. Against you, you only have we sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely we were sinful at birth, sinful from the times our mothers conceived us. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach us wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse us with hyssop, and we will be clean. Wash us, and we will be whiter than snow. Let us hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from our sins and blot out all our iniquities. Create in us pure hearts, O God, and renew steadfast spirits within us. Do not cast us from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore to us the joy of your salvation and grant us willing spirits to sustain us. Then we will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save us from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves us, and our tongues will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or we would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit. A broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. Dear Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that we still struggle with our sinful nature sometimes. We still struggle with sin sometimes, O oh Lord. 
And we do things that, that we know better than. Or sometimes we fail or refuse to do things that we should, that you have called us to. Sometimes, Lord, we have bad attitudes that, that don't honor you or that don't uh, uplift the people around us. Sometimes we have hard hearts. Uh, so, Lord, we pray that you would forgive us of our selfishness. We pray that you would forgive us of our hearts, of our bad attitudes, of our, of our sin. Lord, we thank you so very much for your wonderful grace and mercy. Thank you, Jesus, for what you've done on the cross of Calvary and, on the, and coming out of that grave uh, so that we can be forgiven of our sin. Thank you for your blessed forgiveness. In Jesus' holy name we pray, amen. The psalmist then declared in Psalm 32, 1 and 2, Blessed is he whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man whose sin the Lord does not count against him. So this morning, I hope that you are blessed because you know that you are forgiven by Jesus Christ and what he's done for us. So the Apostle Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 and 24 the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said this is my body which is for you do this in remembrance of me and so if you take your Lord's Supper packet and remove the top layer and take the wafer out of that The body of Christ broken for you. Well, I have lost my bread. <laughs> the body of Christ which was broken and killed for the payment of our sins take and eat in remembrance of him the apostle Paul continued in 1 Corinthians 11, 25, in the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. This cup represents the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, which was shed for the forgiveness of our sins. Take and drink in remembrance of him. So it's a, it's a simple way of remembering. Eating a piece of bread, and drinking a little bit of juice, but it's, it's profound. It's profound and it helps us to remember what Jesus has done for us. And really, uh, going through the Lord's Supper together is a proclamation of the gospel itself. It helps us to remember the gospel. It's our story. It reminds us of our desperate need for a Savior because of our sin. It reminds us that and his extraordinary love for us, 
God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to live a perfect, sinless, human life, and then to sacrifice himself by taking our sin on himself and, and dying on the cross in our place. And it reminds us of how he died for our sin, but then he rose from the dead, defeating the power of sin and death. And it reminds us that in Christ, we can be forgiven. We can be reconciled to God. We can be redeemed. We can be adopted into God's family. We have the great promise of being with God forever and ever and ever. It reminds us that when we uh, put our trust in Jesus' death and resurrection, he gives us new, abundant, eternal life with God. So this morning, I'm not sure where you are in your spiritual journey, uh, but uh, if you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, what a, what a beautiful day it would be to trust in Jesus. Uh, won't you invite Jesus to be your Savior and Lord today. For those of us who are in our remembrance of what Jesus has done for us, won't you uh, rejoice in his love? Won't you express your gratitude for his mercy and his grace? And won't you rededicate your life to him today? And so as we remember, may it lead to closer, uh, a closer walk with Jesus. And so our closing uh, hymn of response today, is, well, it's printed in your bulletin. You don't have hymn books, but it's printed in your bulletin. But it's a song that all of you know very, very well, uh, Amazing Grace. And so we're going to sing it together. Um, you'll probably hear me a little better than I can hear you since I'm in the microphone. Uh, but sing loud. Sing like you mean it. Sing like, like Jesus is the most important person in your life, and I hope that that's true for you. Uh, and if this morning you want to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, won't you come and, and let me pray with you here or, or get in touch with me any, any time? Or if there's any decisions that you would like to make, won't you come and make them known at this time? So uh, if you want to grab your hymn sheet out of your bulletin, or if you want to sing it from memory, Richard, you want to get us started? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound.
so much for coming out today and, uh, and experimenting with us with doing this outside thing. Uh, we'll definitely go back inside next week, uh, both for Sunday school and for our worship service. Uh, just one more reminder, if you're interested in doing the tribulation trail with us, please let me know sometime today. we got to do reservations ahead of time for that. And so let me know if you're interested in doing that. So let's close with a word of prayer together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this beautiful day. We thank you so much for the time that we can spend together in worship and study of your word and, and really uh, focusing on Jesus today. Uh, may, may we remember that, that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. And may we always keep our eyes on you, Jesus. And may we uh, focus uh, our, our attention on you every single day and, and strive to build a, a deeper and closer walk with you every single day. Uh, we thank you so much for your, uh, your sacrifice on the cross for us. Thank you for loving us so much that you died for our sin. And thank you that you were powerful enough that you defeated death and rose from the dead. Thank you for this, this beautiful invitation that you have given us to be your followers, uh, to be a part of your family. Thank you, Lord. Uh, thank you, Father, for adopting us into your family when we put our trust in Jesus. And so, Lord, help us as we, as we leave from this place, as we go our ways. Uh, use us as your witnesses. Give us boldness. Give us passion. Give us love. Give us uh, an understanding of the gospel so that we can share it with others. Uh, give us eyes to see those opportunities that you put before us. And Lord, we just surrender our all to you. And we pray that you would fill us with your Holy Spirit and that you would teach us and grow us and build us. And Lord, give us hope and joy and peace and love as we live our lives for you. It's in Jesus' precious holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. I hope you have a great rest of the week, a blessed week, and so you be a blessing to others. So we'll see you soon and very soon. Uh, thank you also uh, for all your prayers for us, and thank you for these sweet cards and this sweet uh, Pastor Recognition Day. So um, we're, we're blessed to be a part of this family. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thanks and have, have a great day. God bless. Thank <laughs> you.